How are you going to? We are now recording and I'm going to hit start. Okay. We are live on Zoom. And so far, it's just us. So. Hi folks, we're gonna take a moment to get settled. Let everybody get in and get a great seat because we know how important it is. We'll get started in just a minute here. There is one advantage to this remote format. None of us had to drive in it to get here. Well, hopefully we didn't. Or take the bus or walk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, of course, our offices are in some sort of a guest house out back or something. And I, I haven't experienced that in my life. So. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we have about half the folks who registered are here. Um, good evening, folks. Um, I think, let's, um, Let's, uh, Rulaine, let's go ahead and kick it off. What do you say? All right. All right. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rulaine Stokes, and I'm the current president of the Lansing Poetry Club. I am very, very happy to be here with uh, Lauren Russell, the director of the RCAH Center for Poetry at Michigan State University, and Lori Hollinger, the assistant director. Also with Dennis Heinrichsen, who was our inaugural Lansing Poet Laureate when we first started the program, and Laura A. Paul, who followed him as our second Poet Laureate. The Laureate Project is now beginning the selection process for our third Laureate for the Lansing and Tri-County area. <coughs> Sorry. Tonight, we are hosting an informational workshop for people interested in the project, especially for those who might be interested in applying for the position. Uh, one thing to note is that we're recording the workshop tonight so we can replay it at different times and people who aren't able to be here tonight will be able to join us a little bit later. Another thing is to make a note of your questions as they arise. And you can ask them in the Q&A session a little later. One thing you might note is the menu bar down at the bottom of the screen has a Q&A option on it. And if you can't see that, you can look under more. And I think it's there. So welcome. We're very happy you're with us tonight. So how about I unmute? There we go. Thanks, Rulaine. Appreciate that. Um, so the Lansing, the Lansing Poet Laureate Project um, had its very early beginnings in 2015 when the Lansing Poetry Club and the Center for Poetry were involved in efforts to pass a Michigan House bill to establish a state poet laureate. That bill stalled in committee permanently. Uh, this effort caught the interest of Bob Trezise, president and CEO of the Lansing Economic Area Partnership, also known as LEAP, who offered to spearhead an effort to establish a Lansing Poet Laureate. With the Lansing Poetry Club and the Center for Poetry, LEAP established a Lansing Poet Laureate program. The first call went out in 2017 
and Dennis Heinrichsen was selected by a committee of Tri-County Arts Advocates and Activists to serve as the inaugural Lansing Poet Laureate from 2017 to 2019. Then in 2019, Laura A. Paul was selected to serve as the 2019 to 2021 Lansing Poet Laureate. The mission of the Lansing Poet Laureate, the primary mission is to engage people within the Tri-County area in the literary arts, not just people who think of themselves as poets or think of themselves as writers, but the wider community. To promote poetry as an art form, both in person and through the use of both traditional and social media, to expand the access to the literary arts, to showcase poetry as a literary voice that contributes to a sense of place, and to create projects that leave a footprint of the work accomplished. Basically, the Laureate Project is designed to function as a catalyst for literary activity. Uh, creativity is contagious. Poets inspire each other. We learn from each other. and. Um, the whole goal is to increase, to widen the poetry community and to widen interest in poetry as an art. In addition, the arts greatly add to the quality of our lives. They make our area, the Lansing area, the Tri-County area more attractive, not only to those of us who live here, but also to businesses and people who might want to relocate here in the future. And this is why LEAP, which is an organization focused on stimulating economic growth in our area, that's why they are funding the Lansing Poet Laureate Project. So, uh, you might want to know who's eligible to apply and, and to become the Lansing Poet Laureate. Um, so the requirements are that one be 18 years or older with their primary res residency in Ingham, Clinton, or Eaton County. Uh, they must be an experienced and skilled poet within the literary and performance formats. They must be able to work independently and have good rapport with various audiences. They must be skilled at communicating in public. They must have a strong social media, must have strong social media and promotional skills. Uh, and they must have a commitment toward the understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So basically, the Poet Laureate is kind of an ambassador for poetry throughout the Tri-County area. Uh, as we've said before, the Poet Laureate works to promote po uh, poetry as an art form, to expand people's access to poetry, to poetry workshops, to the use of poetry in daily life, and to promote poetry as a literary voice that contributes to a sense of place. Uh, the Poet Laureate will, of course, be giving readings and workshops or classes, uh, perhaps many of them. Um, but at least a minimum of four instructional workshops or classes per year and a minimum of four readings per year. And at least one of those workshops and one of those readings needs to be in each of the three counties within the Tri-County area. Um, another, another of their responsibilities will be to implement a project each year that actively engages residents, increases public awareness of poetry, and leaves a footprint of the work accomplished. For instance, a tangible product, a program, or a placemaking initiative. Um, in Dennis Heinrichsen's case, uh, while the project that he initially proposed was something different, uh, the opportunity arose to be able to leave a somewhat different uh, impression, uh, quite literally. Uh, Dennis put together a project wherein there was a call for poems that were 
site specific uh, in the greater Lansing area with the intention of uh, having them engraved into the sidewalk in various locations. Um, and here are a few photos of the Lansing, um, of the Lansing Sidewalk Poetry Initiative. Um, this is, uh, this is in front of the Blue Owl Coffee Shop in Rio Town on South Washington Ave. And the poet was Grace Karras, whose poem for the poets gathered here was selected for this location. Um, the engravers uh, did this via a computer program hooked up to this amazing engraver. Um, and it was one of, oh gosh, I don't remember how many locations eight. in Lansing. Eight, eight. thank you. Yeah. Um, and it was such a hit that it was also repeated in Charlotte. Um, this and is Saint the- And St. John's also. Pardon? And St. John's also. Ah, yes. And here's the one that is in Old Town. And here is work in progress on the bridge in Old Town on one of them. So it's important to keep in mind that the project that you propose may not be the one that actually comes to fruition. And that's okay, flexibility is important. Um, Laura Apol had also um, proposed a different project, uh, but her plans were somewhat sideswiped, just like the rest of us by the pandemic. And so what Laura came up with was called Poetry in Place, which shared recordings of folks reading a poem and sharing them during the month of April, National Poetry Month. Um, this is located, this that I'm sharing is on the Lansing Poet Laureate website, um, which will be part of the Poet Laureate's uh, responsibilities to keep that updated. But so many poets stepped forward to volunteer to share their poems or someone else's poems may see some familiar faces here, may even see yourself here. Um, but it was really just a, a fine way to connect, I think. There we are. Um, so in addition to the projects, um, you are expected to manage your own schedule to serve as the point of contact for all programming inquiries from the public and to arrange details for programs and to publicize via social media and coordinate press releases with LEAP. Then at the end of your term, um, part of your responsibility will to be help to help the incoming poet laureate to help uh, that per facilitate the transition of the new poet laureate. Uh, there are, of course, reporting and paperwork to do, and that involves quarterly reports of the laureate's work to uh, to leap to Emma Bostwick, who's our um, responsible person, our primary contract at LEAP. And at the end of two years, I think to have the opportunity to write a reflection paper on what you've accomplished, which actually I think will be a really wonderful experience to look back on what has happened during your term. 
in return for all this, the Lansing Poet Laureate appointment is, as Rulane stated, will run from April of 2022 to April of 2024. And the selected Poet Laureate will be paid an honorarium of $2,000 for each year for a total of $4,000, which is funded by LEAP. Um, now, if we can take a look, I'm going to put the application up on our screen here. If I can work all the buttons. Uh, let me flip to the correct spot. Thank you for your patience as I figure out what it is I'm trying to do. There we go. That's what I want to do. I'll start there. Then. that. There it is. I thought I closed as many windows as possible. All right. And so um, this is the application as it appears online. I'm hoping you can still see that. I just moved it over a little on my screen. I don't know if that reflected. Um, so of course the full the full application is, um, I'm going to put this into the chat window, is available at the link that I have just pasted into the chat, if you'd care to follow along with me. Um, so um, the deadline for applications, of course, is Monday, February 7th by 5 p.m. And as we have reviewed there, um, oh, I keep going back and forth here and that's never a good idea, is it? There we go. So, um, The applications, once, once it's been determined that the applicant is indeed eligible via their residency, um, the selection criteria will be based around the three categories here the aesthetic quality of the written and recorded work that was submitted with the application, um, the, um, whether the applicant demonstrates uh, a hearty history of community involvement and literary activity within the community, um, is the knowledge, has, have, have they demonstrated the knowledge and ability to social media and the website to interact with the community. And we'll also look at the potential for engagement, whether the proposed projects are achievable, will they engage residents in meaningful ways that further the literary arts in the community? Um, will the poet advance the region's sense of place through poetry and permanent public art with a focus on expanding access to underserved communities. Um, so we have covered, let's see. So things to be included in your application are a resume or CV, five written poetry work samples, an optional live audio or video recording of a perform, preferably performed by you and to be available to present your work in an interview if you're chosen as one of the top candidates. Um, additionally, you should provide a one-page proposal of one poetry project that includes project goals, promotional strategy, and community engagement strategy. 
Um, and so, as you'll also find in the forms, there's a this bit of a checklist with everything required. Here we go. Knew it was here. So you'll complete the form that's that's here online. Um, again, right. here's a little more detail regarding your proposal. Um, written work samples. Um, description of your your work sample, including your name, the titles of the pieces that are included, and if included, the video and audio recording, and brief description or synopsis of the included work samples. Um, we would also ask you to list two professional references and to complete and sign the form with your application. Um, and that is generally it. And I think, unless I have forgotten something, I think we're ready for the Q&A portion of our evening. Thanks, Laurie, and thanks, Relaine. If people have questions, can you please put them in the Q&A function? The Q&A, click on the Q&A icon, which is um, second to your right at the bottom of your screen and put your questions in there. And we have four people on the panel who can answer them. And I must uh, apologize briefly to uh, one of our attendees who I clicked a button by accident and then I clicked it again to unclick what I had clicked. So apologies for my clumsiness and hope I didn't cause any major confusion for you. I'm not seeing questions so far. I guess I'll ask one. <laughs> Is there anything um, the two, Laura and Dennis in particular, but also actually Laurie or Relaine from your vantage point? Is there anything particular you think applicants should know, um, particularly Laura and Dennis, that you didn't know going into it? Great question, Lauren. Thank you. I, if I, if I'll, I'll chime in here. I think uh, Laurie hit on it, but I think it's worth uh, repeating. That is, I, you, you go in with a plan for the two years as part of the application, and then mine blew up in my face day one. I realized it just couldn't be done. Um, the time, part of the timing, I couldn't get in touch with people to set up anything, so I had to adjust and sort of improvise. So I think the ability to um, not be um, paralyzed uh, when things aren't going um, the way you thought they might go, once you get out there and actually interact with people and you'll start seeing possibilities, the ability to improvise and create new partnerships and create new ideas about that footprint will, will come in handy. And that was certainly my experience um, as the, the, I don't even think of myself as the 2019 to 21 poet laureate. I think of myself as the COVID poet laureate. And that was certainly certainly the case. Um, the, the other thing that I think that I didn't um, anticipate was how many invitations I would get. So that um, minimum requirement at, made me imagine that I was going to be soliciting those things. And really people were enthusiastic about having a poet laureate and had lots of ways they wanted um, a poet laureate to engage with the community. And um, I wish 
probably that I had been a little more um, ready at the start to do my own um, getting out there. I was totally busy. And I think Dennis was too. I've heard him talk about, you know, I was super busy just saying yes to things. Um, it wasn't the case that I was saying, hey, do you want? I was mostly saying, sure, I can be there. Um, and that was something I hadn't really anticipated. I think it's likely that the Poet Laureate will, as Laura said, uh, get a lot of requests. And I anticipate that one of the complex, complex tasks is time management, figuring out your own priorities, and if you have to say no to something, how you might want to say that, or what other resources there are to uh, try and meet those goals. But I think not everything is possible, and so you have to figure out what your priorities, what, what is possible, and what your own resources, what your human resources are. And, and I think what's great about our now having sort of a, a set of previous poet laureates is that if it doesn't work, you can say, oh, maybe someone else can help me out with this. Another poet in the community or someone who's played this role before so that you're not the only person who people can reach out to. I think that's really important really important and provides an opportunity for other people within the poetry community who might be yeah. more than willing to help. I, I think that um, Dennis's term, because he was not the, the COVID poet laureate, um, <laughs> <laughs> offered him the opportunity to really um network quite a bit and it was uh it really helped to build a, a team poet uh atmosphere so um and it's really help con uh, connect i think the different poetry communities not only in the lansing area but also with charlotte and saint john's that was really that interconnectivity i think still exists and it's been one of the really positive results of the laureateship. There actually is a question now in the Q&A. How engaged and easy to work with in the various levels of schools? What was the split between the various age levels of schools? Maybe Dennis can- Yeah, I, um... My plan was actually to do a lot of work poetry in schools because that's I had background in that and I thought I had contacts in the three county area and that's where it kind of blew up because I was appointed in April and starting then to try to set up stuff for the following September was almost impossible to do. Nobody wanted to talk to me about the next academic year. And then when the year started, you really couldn't get in until a year and a half. And by then I was already saying yes to every phone call that came through. I didn't even have a chance to really do that kind of work. But I did get in with, you know, some fourth and fifth graders. I went into some uh, Lansing uh, schools here on the south side and worked with middle schoolers. Um, trying to think where else. I went down to Charlotte and worked in the um, uh, crosswalk with like an after school program for troubled teens. I went down there and worked for a while. So I worked with a uh, pretty wide range. Uh, I had background in that. I, I did a um, poetry in the schools for a while and then I co coordinated a gifted and talented program for LCC. So I worked with fourth graders through um, eighth graders and then as a poet uh, in the schools, I worked with you know second graders through you know high school. So uh, it depends, you have to make con you know, getting connections with the teachers to get in there and do that kind of work, um, I think is, is, was for me a hurdle. I, I think that's, you gotta have those contacts. I don't know how to, uh, what, the, what the link in, um, or what the, what the path in is for that. That's, that's the tough spot, but the important spot. I think that, that would be great work to do. So were the ones you were able to in after school programs and so on, was that from people contacting you? Yeah, Rena, Rena Risper was on the committee, uh, was doing stuff with dictionaries and, and, and uh, writing and words and vocabularies down in, um, I forget the name of the school on the south side of town here. 
And I went down there uh, two or three days for about a month and worked with the kids. And then I knew some um, teachers, Rulane um, connected with a, a neighbor of ours who teaches in Montessori. And then I connected through her to somebody else and got sort of a chain link through, uh, through that person. Um, this was a school in Bath. Uh, I went up there for a, a day and worked with some kids. Um, I wanted to do more, but it was, I didn't, try, trying to figure out who to, who, who to contact within each school is a, a tough call. But I think, you know, we know somebody in Waverly now, right, right, Rulane? And, uh, um, you know, I met, I met with someone down in Charlotte, a teacher down there, we were trying to get a, a Charlotte Poet Laureate going and that kind of, um, we didn't have the energy for that. Um, but there are people out there, I think, you know, that, that you could get in touch with to get into the schools. Um, but I think, it, I think that would be like, you're gonna get a lot of phone calls, I hope. You're gonna say yes to those because that's where you're gonna make those connections. Um, but then you're also gonna have to do some planning and do some setup work. And that takes a lot of time, I found, just to get, say, um, the sidewalk project going, getting money for it all and getting all that legwork in or um, getting into the schools will take, a, I think, quite a bit of legwork as well. So um, um, thinking about that, thinking about your project and making sure that you can get that thing started if, if it needs that kind of work, what kind of money you need to get it done, get those things in a row so you can accomplish that uh, or uh, cut bait and improvise and find something, <laughs> something else to do real quickly. Thank you, Dennis. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A, so I guess sort of last call for questions. If, let me, I, I, I wanted to say here, I've been trying to get it into people's hands. I don't know if everyone's seen that. In the, a bunch of grants went out to port, poet laureates throughout the country. We have a poet laureate in the UP who got 50 grand, and I think the poet laureate in Flint also got 50 grand. But in the new, uh, recent issue of the American Poet, all those projects are there. So, you know, that would be a starting kit for me to go in there. What are these people doing with all that money? What, are they, what kinds of things are they doing to engage um, the community uh, and create footprints in, you know, in, in small areas, not just at a statewide area, but in the various cities that some of these poet lords have money for. So I have a copy of that if folks um, want to get in touch with me, I can somehow get that uh, downloaded or uh, get a photograph of that to you so you can see what those projects are. I think there's some really good ideas in there. I think they're online. I'm trying to find the link. It's the exactly. Academy of American Poets, they right? Come too. Yeah, they come in. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I tried finding it online. I don't. I found the, who got the money, but I didn't see project write-ups, I don't think. But I'm pretty sure they're in the Poet Laureate or the uh, American Poet. Maybe we can post that to the FAQ page. We can track down the info. Okay. That's a great point. Last questions? I am I on? I have a question. Am I muted or no. not? I'm not yeah, muted. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, question for Dennis and for Laura. What do you What do you think was the best or one of the be best parts of being a laureate? What What really clicked for you? Maybe Laura start. I really, as much as I, you know, talk about being the COVID um, poet laureate, what was great is that the workshops that I did and the readings um, had so much reach. And it felt like there were people who I had never seen in poetry workshops elsewhere or at readings who suddenly were showing up for everything because they could, because it didn't require driving. Um, and I, you know, of course there were people from all over the world, but that's not really the, you know, Lansing Area Poet Laureate focus. Um, but it did feel like there were a lot of people who just wanted to be able to um, join a community and a community of writers. Sometimes they weren't writers themselves. They just were joining a community of people who were engaged with the written word, with poems. And that was really a wonderful thing as far as I was concerned. 
I think my um, takeaway was I felt I had been given a magic wand or something, a key to a kingdom, um, being the poet laureate, because it's opened so many doors um, um, that might not have been open otherwise had I been just an in individual trying to make these kinds of connections with people. Uh, the response was just so amazing. I was so welcomed by um, the three county area. I was blown away by it. Um, and then the other one was just seeing poetry, the root, the root notes of poetry as you move around when you're working with kids, it's about synthesis, I think. It's about play with language and just getting them to put, put something on the page. Uh, uh, when you're working with adults, you get into the idea of poetry and healing and you, you run into a lot of, uh, um, you know, hurt people who need see poetry as a way to begin to express that working with uh, the troubled kids down in um, Charlotte was uh, just an amazing experience. Um, um, so seeing, po seeing poetry operate at all those different levels apart from when uh, poetry uh, in my normal life, which has probably got a more academic slant to it, a more prof you know, I'm trying to be a professional poet, a uh, completely different tribe of poets. Uh, so I, I found that really heartening that poetry is this living, breathing thing that, is in St. John's as rich as it is in, in Lansing. It's just the critical mass is that what it is, you know, don't have a lot of people there, but it's that same way in Charlotte and Eaton Rapids. People were really ready to have poetry in their communities. Um, so I, that, that kind of blew me away and opened my eyes up to um, a broader view of what poetry really is. Some really beautiful responses. And if there are last questions, comments? Yes, I think the Poet Laureate Project has really enriched our community. I think the work that Laura and Dennis has done has made a difference, has strengthened the community of writers and increased the general public's appetite and openness to poetry and the literary arts. So thank you both very, very much. For your work and we look forward to uh installing or whatever you know uh installing a new poet laureate soon so and and i'll just add um the lansing city pulse does a great job of featuring things that are happening with the poet laureate so um kudos to them even though they're not represented here probably but you know they've done a, a great job of um, raising the visibility and uh, anything that raises the visibility of poetry in the community seems like it's part of this project and bigger than this project um, so um, it's it's so great to have poetry be alive and well in the area and the poet laureate gets to be part of that which is such a gift and i'm happy to um, talk with anyone um, that's part of uh, what I agreed to um, as the outgoing poet laureate. I'm happy to talk with anyone um, about their application or about what they're thinking of. So um, very findable online, and I'm happy to do that. Well, me as well, if you have questions. So Lori and Lauren, are we ready to wrap up? Well, thank you all for attending uh, this evening. And uh, we encourage you to apply for the position or if you know somebody that you really think should apply, please talk to them and tell them about this uh, video and where they can find the application and the guidelines for the project. Thank you so very much on behalf of the Lansing Poetry Club the RCAH Center for Poetry at Michigan State University and the Lansing Economic Area Partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Good work, guys. Thank you all and good night. Good night. Take care, guys. Good night.